Okay. Um, so newspaper Twitter. So we just had a call with Peter who was mentioning the uh, one of the, um, the living newspaper. Uh, so it's important to say about newspaper theater that it's, it's not uh, really created by Augusto Boal. Uh, there were forms of newspaper theater um, in the uh, in the pre 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 uh, revolution time in Russia. Um, in uh, and and there were different iterations of this kind of playing the news. And like I said last time, in a way we can think that. Theater comes before the news because for many hundreds of years in, in Europe, in other parts of the world, the news came through the theater. So the theater troops that were moving were the ones that were moving the news. They were not uh, CNN or BBC or, or newspapers. The, the news were the theater groups. They were bringing the, the what we call political and ever story. They would be playing that out in the street and this is how people getting their information most of the time. Um, so, so in a way, the, the, it's nothing new, but what is um, new or, or interesting about the, the way Boal arrived to doing this newspaper theater, which is a, a manifesto that came out of his work in uh, Brazil. Um, so he worked as an artistic director of a theater called Arena Theater in Sao Paulo. Uh, and they were doing um, not necessarily political theater, but they were doing, uh, let's say, uh, what you would call now fringe. They were doing a lot of uh, uh, unconventional for their time. He was already considered a very revolutionary theater maker even before Theater of the Press. Uh, he brought uh, a lot of new things. So when he arrived to the Brazilian scene of theater, most plays, uh, were uh, actually repro reproduction, Italian reproductions. So they were Italian directors doing Italian plays in Brazil in Portuguese. Um, but uh, so he, he, he brought a lot of new things. He brought Stanislavski method that he got in his time in the States. And he, um, he was a writer, he was a playwright. So he, um, see he wrote play, but he also did uh, playwriting workshops for the first time, creating Brazilian for the first time, uh, and also working with uh, workers, so with uh, working class people uh, to create uh, this place. So uh, all of this is pre, pre, pre what we call theater of the press. And then, uh, so the newspaper theater is born uh, in dictatorship time. So, so dictatorship came to Brazil and um, it had become really difficult to do theater in the theater. Um, um, censorship, uh, um, some uh, accusations that were coming, uh, even paramilitary groups that were coming armed to the theater. So it has been very difficult to do that. So he produced um, uh, a manifesto, which is the newspaper theater first version and they was he sent it out to all the groups that he was connected with and and in that there was this techniques and the techniques were an invitation to basically uh, we the theater artists cannot do the theater in the theater so you can do the theater uh, so there was no workshop there was just this invitation uh, and the working with the news is um is both it bypassed censorship because the, you cannot censor something that was already passed, but also uh, the way that the techniques are built and the way that it's invited in the context that you, the text is being kind of, um, the performance creates a critical reading of the text because uh, the news are a story. <laughs> uh, and, and when we play a story, in a, uh, we change the story. Um, so, so this was uh, pretty revolutionary and problematic. In fact, that was um, the, just after he brought that and, and many hundreds of groups were created through that, uh, he got arrested and tortured and exiled from Brazil. So that, that and that's considered the first technique of, of theater of the press. The other techniques were all developed after his exile. 
So the then came invisible theater and image theater, but he was already in exile in other parts of South America. So um, so why this is something about so uh, so the newspaper theater is the story the, of Boal is the story of of uh, under dictatorship. So the question is why now why here we we obviously are not living uh, in, a, in a dictatorship or under um, censorship. But um, I, I do feel that we are living in a world that is very influenced and even manipulated uh, through the stories and the information we receive. So the, the kind of the, even, even in a way much more than before, we are bombarded by stories and images uh, which tell a narrative um, that is not always conducted or often not conducted to, um, let's call it to, to change, or we can also call it, um, you know, um, I like to think it at this moment as a, the life-sustaining paradigm, because that's where I feel right now is is where we're. Um, I feel for all social struggles at the moment, but I, I feel very strongly right now for the collective social struggle, which is uh, how do we survive the mess? We're in. And um, so this is why I, I felt also called to try to bring that and, and also adapt it to the situation where we are in, in which uh, news um, is generated and produced in a different way. So now a lot of the news that we consume actually don't come to us through um, big newspapers at all. They are actually co-generated through thousands and millions of people through social media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so in a way, some of the, mm -hmm. some of the, some of the prophecy of even the, the positive prophecy of uh, uh, reclaiming mm -hmm. the tools of media has already, is already here because we do have the tools to produce news. Mm -hmm. And we consume news that is being produced or produced, um, diffused by other people like us, let's say. So there is still a, 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 a difference between the capacity of someone living some, in a place where internet connectivity is lower or, or a certain, there are still these differences. But on a basic level, uh, if you have a cell phone you, with a camera, with an internet connection, you are potentially, and not just potentially, you are effectively a reporter uh, of social reality. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean, the fact that we have this power doesn't necessarily mean that we know how to use it <laughs> in a way that is conductive to change mm -hmm. or to thriving life. So the fact that we have that possibility doesn't mean that we do it. And why we don't do it or, or how we use it, that's the question for me, which I don't have necessarily an answer right now. Um, but, and there is definitely a lot of external aspects to it. And um, you might know that algorithm the, the story of algorithm, you might have heard about that, but um, there is a, a huge um, element right now in social media and, and the internet, which is the algorithm that Google and Facebook are using uh, to bring us the information. And uh, the way these algorithms are built is basically that it will bring us more of what we're already interested in. <laughs> so, uh, so I'll try to. Read. So it basically it tries to learn us, and then it will bring us. It basically it creates a replicate of you, trying to predict your every move, and then it will try to predict your 
move and bring to you what you would theoretically want to do or like more because that's the attention economy so so it's the the, the like, when you would when you enter a youtube then it starts a game somebody made an article about that but in which youtube is trying to get you to be on youtube the longer possible <laughs> And, 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 and there is an algorithm that is being built and an artificial intelligence and developed to do that. So that was longer than, than I expected and in terms of why. Um, but uh, I just wanted to, to share a little bit about uh, the context. Um, and then um, I don't know if there is someone that wants to add something or reflect on something from what I just said uh, before we go into the next activity and, uh, and playing. Magua, uh, this is, is you. Oh, or, or she should go before. Okay. 12. 12. Um, okay, so uh, the four techniques we're exploring today uh, are uh, improvisation, uh, parallel action, improvisation. What, uh, could you say that again, parallel action? Uh, I mean. Parallel action. So parallel action, oh, is, parallel. <laughs> parallel action is that, so usually um, someone is reading the text, the news, okay, so the article. So let's say... Um, I'm reading the news about, uh, I just found a random news here about the New Zealand, as New Zealand, Iceland will kind of advance again, geo warrants eruption is the next, uh, in the next 24 hours are still likely. So this is the, the article and I read it and then someone else is doing an action which is parallel to that. And the parallel action could be any, it could be something that comes from the news, so someone is doing a volcano, but it could be something that has nothing to do with it, but we, we somehow want to play with, this, with the meaning, you know? So someone is brushing their teeth while there is someone reading about a volcano and, and a couple dying in a volcano, you know? So, uh, so it, it's, it, it is also a dramatic effect. So it's someone reading the news or an article or a text, and then someone else is doing an action and the action could be connected or disconnected. So it's this um, parallel action. So that's, that's the technique, parallel action. And the second uh, technique for today is improvisation. And uh, improvisation is just to improvise the news. So let's say we're doing this news about the volcano in New Zealand. So we read that together one time and then we improvise. So an improvise, uh, um, you just, you can decide before more or less what you're going to do, but in the end of it, when you improvise, you're just allowing something to happen. So we, we start, let's say we read this and we just improvise something. So it could be that we have a sort of plan. Okay, you will be doing the volcano and I will do, be doing the people running around, or we can come also without not a plan at all that's improvisation. So it's an improvising the news. And this also brings something different, something new, uh, because the text and the voice is one thing, uh, but uh, uh, the action brings another level to it. Uh, so this is the second, improvisation. Third is uh, historical reading, uh, which is not so much a, a reading uh, in the sense of reading the way we are reading the voice, but it's uh, putting the news in a different historical context. So uh, to, to bring some effect to it. So let's say we are doing again the volcano uh, article, uh, but we, we put it in prehistoric time and we are dinosaurs. And there is this volcano that's going to destroy us. You know, so that it's one of the theories about dinosaurs, right? That they were extinct by a volcano. So, so we're putting that in that context. Okay, so now we're doing this 
story of the book, kind of, but it's in dinosaur time. And then the dinosaurs are, I don't know, they have a meeting about what to do about it. <laughs> um, I'm just um, throwing ideas here. But it's basically, you bring something, maybe a struggle that is happening today, but you bring it to another period. And that uh, brings some kind of new um, information. Okay, so that's the historical reading. Um, and the fourth, uh, is reinforcement and it's um, basically using uh, audio visual material for example projecting a video or using a, um, uh, music played or um, it also can be using some famous tunes you know so for example uh, 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 publicity or or you know or the anthem so so we are doing this volcano thing and in the background uh, we have uh, a commercial about shoes made in New Zealand I don't know I'm, I'm, or, or there is a jingle that in the middle so this is the, the we have this volcano is erupting and then in the middle uh, buy uh, this shoes come from New Zealand, Kiwi, da 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 da, da. <laughs> okay? So it's uh, again uh, interrupt, interrupting the, the sequence somehow and, and adding another layer and this is also could be uh, a tune, a video, a projection. Here um, we can, uh, for example, the magic, the magic of uh, of Zoom uh, is that we can actually do that. I can even actually, uh, I'll just ban that had to leave, left us with a video. So I'm just going to show a few seconds of the video. It's just an option that you have on the bottom of the screen. You will see you have share. And when you do that, you can share your screen. So we can show some moments of this video. And I can even interrupt from. I think my biggest breakthrough is an evolution biologist. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so just, just to share that we can do that. We can actually uh, show um, things. Um, okay. Uh, so this is the four techniques. You. What we're going to do now is that if you have questions about any of them, you can ask me now or write in the chat. But what we'll do is that we'll divide into groups. And in the group, uh, you can choose one or two of those techniques to work with. So one or two, so you can choose uh, one of them uh, or two combined uh, and, and one text to work with. And the text could be anything. Uh, ben gave us some ideas in the beginning. What was it? Uh, Trump's impeachment, uh, forest system collapsing, um, or, or a volcano in New Zealand. You know, you can choose as the group what you would like to work on. So maybe you already have it in mind, or you're just going to search very fast uh, something that appears in uh, some of them, um, I, I took this uh, um, randomly on the US, USA Today website. I just kind of scroll randomly and then disappeared. So you can choose uh, something. So you don't need the whole article, is that right? Oh, no, no, just, just choose. Yeah, okay. we're, we're doing it as an exercise also. So the, the mm -hmm. idea is here that we are, we're playing. And, and we're experimenting. So take just not a full long article, but maybe a paragraph, uh, right? Uh, so I'm, I'm going to put the names. I, I had them before. I'm going to put them again. There is also the, the article that I think I shared with you in which it has a little bit more of the information. 
uh, and I will also put it to you in the groups, in the chat. So I will broadcast it to your, because I can broadcast messages when you're in the chat, in the groups. So I can just send it to you. So you have the, the four techniques. Okay. Do you have any questions or can we go to, I will send you the same thing in the groups afterwards. Um, yes, can we? Yeah. Good. So. Yeah, I, I needed a little more explanation on, on uh, historical reading. Okay, so historical reading is basically placing the news or the, the article or the text in a different historical context. Okay. That sheds a new light on that. For example, taking Trump impeachment and putting it in the Middle Ages and Trump is a king or whatever, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, as, or he's a pope, I don't know, there is a, uh, or, 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 or taking um, any, any text and putting it in a different historical context. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to create rooms. Uh, recreate. So this time I'm going to create less room. So we are, I'm going to create three rooms. So basically you will be either three or four people in the same room. Um, take um, a few minutes to decide which of the technique you would like to use and which text, and then uh, create a, a sort of plan. I remind you that one of the one of the possibilities is improvisation, so <laughs> you just improvise. Um, but uh, um, so I'll, we have about. Uh, let me check. Yeah, I I think I I think I I don't like to give too much time because then we we get mixed up and then we don't have time to see. Uh, so I'll give fifteen minutes, and then if you. Um, yeah, so, so and I, I will let you know when they have five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. So I'll, I'll, I'll make like a reminder. Okay, so 15 minutes in total. So try to maybe take five minutes to share ideas and then five minutes to kind of make a plan and maybe five minutes to rehearse if you feel you can rehearse, right? Uh, okay. So we say goodbye to many uh, and, uh, <laughs> and thank you for joining us. Uh, and so I'm actually going to move uh, and uh, okay. So Melanie, Alessia, Susan. Okay, I'm opening the rooms. Ready? Ready, go. Okay, just click the join link. Uh, oh yeah. So I'm resuming recording, and, and uh, I, I assume we are uh, might be ready. You might be not, but uh, everything you have is perfect. And uh, it's an improvisation, even if uh, so. Be surprised with what will come up. So how we're going to do it is that we're we're going to mute ourselves if you can, uh, and if you have not done that before, uh, make sure you are on gallery view, not on speaker view. This way you can see everyone, okay? So, uh, but what we'll do is that we're, uh, we're going to mute and close our video if we're not performing. So, so the, f the first group uh, will, uh, who is the first group? Uh, who was in breakout room number one? I was. Okay, breakout room number one will start. So 
breakout room two and three, you can close the video. And it says just say stop video, right? Okay. Good. So it's Alessia and Olchi and someone else was in that room. Just and me, Melanie. Ah, uh, Melanie. Okay, so Melanie, you can you can be with your video on. Yes. Okay. Or or. Okay. Everybody else stops video. Got it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're we're going to do three, two, one, and then action, and you have. Um, um, Whatever you prepared or not, you're going to share with us, okay? You want us to say action or you're gonna say action? Uh, you can just begin when you're ready. So- Okay. I'm so we'll start now, okay? Okay. Incensed perhaps by her selection and not his, as Times Magazine's Person of the Year, Donald Trump opened Twitter fire Thursday morning on the climate activist Greta Thunberg. Trump, 73, tweeted that Thunberg, 16, who has been diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, had an anger management problem and should chill, no pun apparently intended. So ridiculous, the president wrote. Greta must work on her anger management problem, then go to a good old fashioned movie with a friend. Chill, Greta, chill. Thunberg has caught the ire of many US conservatives for helping to spotlight a climate emergency, which her critics pretend does not exist. But Trump's attack on her in personal terms from his presidential bully pulpit struck many observers as marked and hypocritical by hypocritical escalation. Trump's wife and his eldest son recently reacted with outrage when a witness called by Democrats to testify in the impeachment hearings punned on the name of Trump's 13-year-old son, Barron, to make a point about how presidents are not kings. Melania Trump is the nominal head of an initiative against online bullying called Be Best. That's it. <laughs> uh, great. Um, so actually it was, you, you were correct, Melanie, you could have, because you were doing parallel action, you could have been without the video, it would, it would have made sense. But uh, <laughs> um, thank you. So I guess it was parallel action, and um, we're we're going to get a, a a little moment after to share what we received from from everything. But uh, so we're we're just going to move to the second group, and then the third group, and then we're we're going to share what we received from everyone together. So group group number two, and group number one, you can close your video. And uh, in, in group number two, if you, if you have a reading part and you're not supposed to be in the video, you can also remove your uh, video as well. So we're going to do three, two. Well, I guess we are number two. <laughs> do you want to read it? Uh, I can try to read it. And uh, you improvise? <laughs> you have to improvise, okay. yeah. Okay, um, so. Okay. Chilean anti-rape anthem becomes international feminist phenomenon. A rapist in your path performed by women in mass protest. Performances staged across Latin America and Europe. A Chilean protest song about rape culture and victim shaming has become a viral item for feminists around the world. On Violador on tu Camino, a rapist in your path, was first performed in late November as Chile, Chile's nationwide uprising against social inequality pushed into its second month. Videos of the song and its accompanying dance moves quickly 
went viral around spreading across Latin America and the world with performances taking place in Mexico, Colombia, France, Spain, and the UK. I stop here. <laughs> So thank you. We take a moment to. Oh, I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, um, we, I'm recording, so hopefully we can all see it again. Uh, so um, then we have group group number three. Uh, turn on your cameras. <laughs> Okay, Sophia, you can turn off yours. Okay, so we have Liliana, Jeanette, Susan. In the last performance, which is called, it has an uh, um, erasure. 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 Performed by who? What's your group name? Jump in. Don't erase us. <laughs> okay. Good. Three, two, one. Okay. Wait. Um, about the next 15, less than 20 minutes. Huh? Uh, okay. Wow. Sorry, we got a little organizing to do here real quick. Um, Susan, do you want to read the, the one, the New York Times? Uh, Rohingya one and Janet read the banking one. Okay. And then uh, I'll, I'll read first. Oh, Janet, your microphone is off. Okay, which, one, which one do you want me to read? Okay. Okay, I'm reading the banking first. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no Bellis <laughs> denies mass murders by Myanmar. A day after Da Aung San Suu Kyi listened impassively, impassively to searing testimony about the horrors inflicted upon the Rohingya Muslims of Myanmar, she took the podium on Wednesday at a limited United Nations court to defend her homeland against accusations. Intercommunicational communal violence, possible, only possible, use of disproportionate force, but not genocide. Yep. Okay, this is what erasure looks like. This is what racism sounds like in the banking industry in the USA. A JP Morgan employee and a customer secretly recorded their conversation with bank employees. Jimmy Kennedy earned 13 million during his nine year career as a player in the National Football League. He was the kind of person most banks would be happy to have as a client. But when Mr. Kennedy tried to become a private client at J.P. Morgan Chase, an elite designation that would earn him travel discounts, exclusive events invitations, and better deals on loans, he kept getting the runaround. At first, he didn't understand why. Then last fall, he showed up at his local J.P. Morgan branch in Arizona, and an employee offered an explanation. You're bigger than the average person, period. And you're also an African-American, the employee Charles Bel Belton, who is black, told Mr. Kennedy. We're in Arizona. And I don't have to tell you about what the demographics are in Arizona. They don't see people like you a lot. Mr. Kennedy recorded the conversation and shared it with the New York Times. And this is what erasure looks like, US style. <clears throat> so, 
we'll take a moment just to kind of uh, stay with whatever the sensation of it right now, of what we received from listening, from looking, from doing. So we're just going to take a minute to just feel uh, into that space. Um, and then we can just share either in the text box or, or saying it out loud. What is it that we saw? So the, I, I saw this in the performances. What is I saw? Uh, I saw a man disappearing into the background. I saw people eating like popcorn and laughing while listening to stuff that Trump said and did. I saw the movement of closing eye of not seeing anymore. I saw a lack of emotion. I saw feminists speaking out. I heard the peculiar distortion and changes in language use. And we can also add what we felt. So if we felt uh, an emotion or sensation, Jana, I think you said something, but uh, we could again. I was uh, I was muted. I heard the scribble of the pen. Mm. I think I personally enjoyed Jana's dancing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because I kind of felt that she was in a world of her own, even though something was being read, but she was completely cut off from whatever it was and she was just doing her thing. I felt rage and indignation. Mm. Mm. I felt both indifference and, but also despair in that indifference. I thought that um, the complexity of the emotions I felt with the Trump piece was a very familiar place where you're ho-humming, people are just, you know, going on eating, laughing. At, it's, that's just Trump and the outrageousness of what he's saying in attacking this young woman. So it's the complexity of that emotion. And, and lastly, if there is like an action or something that is emerging for you, that from seeing that, from sharing, so it could be a gesture, you can show it like an image, or you can say it, you know, like. Um, Looking, searching, closed. And take a moment also to see the other images. You can stay in the image, yeah. And good. So 
We'll take another moment to just sense into what this collective sharing just happened. Um, and then we will share what it wants to tell us. So when I mean it is the collective field. What is the collective field? Would let us, what, if it could speak, what will it tell us, our collective field? I, well, I think if it could speak, it could probably talk about the potency of uh, newspaper theater. Because I kind of feel the, that there is uh, much that can be achieved using the medium of uh, newspaper theater. And I think that if this session can talk, it will probably tell us about that, you know, the potency of it, the power in it. That's mm -hmm. my feeling. Yeah, I agree just to echo that, that like, it's so interesting to watch people work together for 15 minutes and people are already reading the news. People already have these impressions of like, you know, how crazy it is or it reminds them of this thing or this other event that happened 50 years ago, you know, like it, we're already kind of doing it in our heads. And so all yeah. just putting like a little bit of action and collaboration to it brings out all of these yeah. interpretations that, were not developed before. I think, there's, I think there's a level of like um, powerlessness that comes out of sort of reading the news where um, you kind of read it and there's sort of like, I'm so, I have such a distance from this thing or it's so, the language of it is so outside of me that like, um, I want to feel a lot of things about this, but I can't do anything with what I feel. So I'm just not going to feel anything. And I think, being able to translate that into some kind of gesture or to some kind of performance, um, it kind of allows you to own that headline or that that article and redefine it and like situate it inside a different reality, which um, is very empowering and I think allows you to feel. I think that was it. Uh, I felt the, um, the empathy, like it's uh, because uh, news are so, uh, um yeah unempathic and uh, and by doing it in this way it's it's you allow yourself to go into uh, more the depth of them um yeah I, I i feel there's something about engagement and agency mm -hmm. um which which kind of 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 cuts across the normalization that, that, that we experience is a kind of protective normalization that we, we go through life with. And, and this is a kind of opportunity, like a window, like a moment <laughs> of, of, of agency and, and, and engagement. Hmm. I think I, this week I've had several, both a theater experience going to a play where it was very talking about <laughs> kind of like a news story <laughs> on top of an interesting theatrical piece about you know artists in post-war germany post world war one germany and the rise of hitler and the other one was uh, a talk with thomas kintridge william kintridge about creativity and he was talking about the, the, the least the least good way to communicate information that you care passionately about is through talking about it and i think this was just a wonderful experience of being able to sort of create with it and you have a whole different relationship with it yeah, yeah. and that's that's yeah. this is uh a, a as a community long-time community organizer uh awesome. is, is, a, is a very again it's a very powerful lesson <coughs> I wanted to say, um, well, a couple of people have already said a lot of what I wanted to say about this being <laughs> empowering. Um, and I think one of the parts of the empowerment for me is oftentimes when you hear news or when you read news or when you just watch news, it seems to go from this like really heavy, heavy topic to just like, and now for 
you know, the <laughs> results of the basketball game. And I'm like, uh, they're so jarring. <laughs> but that having the, the option to have that jarring thing happen together with the news is just so empowering. There's something in it that, that feels like, okay, we have agency and this is how satire works. Mm-hmm. We've created satire out of mm-hmm. just aligning things in different time mm-hmm. frame. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I feel that. Um, yeah, it's like we're so maybe used to being told what is our story. <laughs> the story of the, of the news and, and that somehow is connected with this indifference and, and also at the same time kind of uh, sadness that comes with that because it, it's such we're kind of like someone is telling us a story which we don't really feel is real anymore <laughs> uh, because it, it has nothing to do uh, but then you know um, it's something that um, someone that I, I learned dragon dreaming with uh, John Croft said in one workshop, which remained really strong with me was that you are not your story. You are the storyteller of your story. So your life is a story that you tell yourself. And, and it's, it's, doesn't, it's not a straight line. It's just uh, if you try to think about your first experience as a child and then try to think what happened the next day, and you wouldn't remember, you know, because memories are like jumps, it jumps. Uh, so it's a story, it's how you tell that story. But you are not the story. We think that we are the story, but we are the storytellers of the story. And I feel it's, it's also true on the collective level that we are not the story, we are the storytellers of that story. Uh, and, and, and that's kind of the, the feeling that I, I, I feel then so what if what if i guess is the question what if we we could really feel that we are those storytellers and what would be the stories then and and it wouldn't be maybe the stories in the news but it would be the stories of this meetings of us meeting and many other people meeting And maybe Sophia wanted to say something also. Yeah, actually, I'm just adding because um, you guys said many things and I, I was just thinking further, yeah, if the collective field could speak, I, um, I felt also like, yeah, these people here in the group concerning about what's going on, like, I don't know exactly how to put it in English, but um, yeah, this concern and you touched it also somehow a uh, uh, sadness also or um, yeah mm, yeah being concerned <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. so if we're concerned it means we care that's the good thing yeah <laughs> so yeah caring <laughs> about what's going on and it's just not we're yeah it's doing something to us uh, hearing listening watching news so we're 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 around we ran out of time basically uh, but I, I wanted to share one thing which is this link which you can use if you haven't done that still or you can do it uh, and, and it's uh, you can just share uh, your name your intention for the process or for of the news and email and contacts, which is optional because then you would see everyone else's. So if you don't want to share your email, don't share your email, it's optional. Uh, but that's also as a way to, to see the other people. Some people were in the last, uh, in the first edition and, um, and they are already in that list. And some people, uh, you can join it. And um, I am inviting and uh, really happy if you would um, bring that to your own context or group like uh, and then if you can share that with us with me with us uh, like uh, like Marianne did uh, if you bring it into a, a local group uh, doing some newspaper theater 
uh, share it uh, with, with, with the group, with me. Uh, and, uh, and like this, we are also, the, the idea is that we're meeting online, but we're also, it's online to offline. So we can bring it from this space to the other space, which could mean many things. It could mean that you do it in a theater group or a group of friends or in your family, or you can do uh, something on yourself. Like I, I like sometimes to create improvisation on the street. <laughs> uh, you know, you can, you know, perform uh, news or, or just feel into um, that and, and share that as well. Um, or just bringing it as, a, as an action, as a, as a, or, or, or as a point of attention which I think is also very we, important. It's the quality of attention that we bring and what we are paying attention to. That's the one thing. And the other thing is that we have still four more techniques to explore. Uh, and, uh, and I, the first meeting was 11-11, the second was 12-12. Theoretically, 1-1 one, one would be the, the time, but it's uh, problematic as a date. So I'm thinking about 10-1, so 10 of January uh, 2020 as the next call. Uh, but I, I will let you know through the, the mail newsletter if you, I hope you're getting that. Uh, and if not, let me know or check your spam folder. Uh, and uh, yeah, whatever comes to you more in terms of feedback or ideas or thoughts, Please send it to me, share it with me, share it with other people. Feel free to connect with other people. I will be sharing this, the recording uh, with the people interested. And um, yeah, uh, I see you in 2020. <laughs> and wish um, good uh, holidays and new year um, ending and beginning. Yuri, would that be at the same time of day? Um, I'm, I'm aiming, I'm, at the moment, I, from the people that I know that are interested, it seems that's the base in terms of time zones, because I, otherwise I would change it only if I get people from Australia that sadly it's the middle of the night for them right now. Uh, but I, there was someone on the newsletter, but I, she didn't write to me, so I'm kind of leaving it for now at 4.30. And then we see maybe we'll do another addition to accommodate different time zones uh, as well. Uh, but it seems like between Pacific Coast, we have some people from LA waking up at 7.30. And then uh, people uh, in Ukraine that came last time and are still with us, uh, uh, which are it's one hour later than, than Central Europe. So that seems like a good time. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so if you want to say goodbye in your own language or just share a gesture or... The Sudanian. <laughs> Hello. Hello, bye. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye. bye.